What's going on guys? Jonah here, your coach of the Seattle Sea Kings for Season 3 of the NPA. Today we're taking on T-Train, coach of the Leicester City Pokemon Club, leader, or one of the leaders of the, I think, second place in the Silver Division. Uh, no, you, you're probably wondering, Joe, why the hell did you post-com your uh, playoff match? Well, you see, I didn't. I live-commed it, and then for some reason, the audio software I used decided to lose my audio. Or, like, it, it, it successfully rendered, it just came out all garbled and, and trash, so... Uh, we don't actually get good audio for this match, so therefore we have to basically redo it again. So, uh, as you can see, your T trains pack in Manectric, Gyarados, Porygon 2, Sneasel, Donphan, and Magearna. And I was bringing Rotom Wash, Typhlosion, Metagross, Togekiss, Drapion, and uh, uh, freaking Landorus Therian. So, you guys can check the team builder, will be down in the description, of course. Uh, get hyped for this match. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hit that like su or that like button down below if you are rooting for the Seattle Sea Kings. And let's get right to it. I'm not going to spoil anything until we get there. So we can find out exactly what happened just an hour or so ago. But, you know, good old audio technical problems being what they are. So anyway, let's get this show on the road here. So as you can see, T-Train is my opponent. And the winner of this match goes on to play most likely under the radar. There's also a chance it can go on to play King, um, or not King Bub or Jerry Oak, I believe. Uh, so I lead off with my Rotom Wash, and T-Train is going to lead off with Willow, his Manectric. Uh, obviously, Manectric is likely going to be, it is a Air Balloon variant, so he obviously brought that so it can handle uh, any potential Earthquake threats. He's going to get a Volt Switch right off the bat. Does a decent amount of damage to uh, to my Rotom Wash, but at the end of the day, that's not a huge deal. Uh, he goes into his Magearna, and Magearna is basically, uh, you know, it's going to be just, I think it's an Assault Vest variant. I, I believe it was an Assault Vest variant. I get my Light Screen up off on it, uh, so that way it can't do nearly as much damage as it could before. The downside is that obviously I'm not going to be doing that much in return. So, uh, Ox Clean is just going to go for Hydro Pump here, see how much damage we can do. And this is where I was pretty sure the, the thing was Assault Vest, because that was a stab, a Hydro Pump, and it only did 30%. So, he goes for the Shadow Ball, and obviously Shadow Ball is only going to do 10-15%. Uh, behind the light screen. So not a whole lot here. We get our leftovers back and we got pretty much all that health back in return. So uh, next up, my opponent's going to withdraw. I believe he goes out into Porygon 2, uh, which is all kinds of lovely because it's, you know, fat duck. We're all, we're all aware of of what Porygon 2 is capable of. It gets a special attack bonus and I go for another Hydro Pump and behind the Eevee Light and we're doing 15, 20%. Not a whole lot. Now, I didn't expect to do a whole lot, but I wasn't exactly expecting Porygon 2 to come in here. Now, Obviously, with with all matches that 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 I'm involved in, I get a little bit of RNG going against me. Uh, so I get a nice Toxic Miss, followed by a Tri Attack, which goes ahead and freezes my Rotom. So my Rotom is now frozen. We are on turn five, and my Rotom is frozen solid and completely unable to do anything in a playoff match. Where it is imperative that all six of my members on my team are able to battle and are at attention ready to go and one of them is now down for the count so Porygon 2 goes and gets the tri-attack off again on Drapion on the switch and luckily for me we don't get two freezes in a row because you know that, that would be my luck but the light screen is down because we had to take the time to switch out Rotom and we're not able to get it back up because Rotom is well frozen so uh, my opponent's gonna go send out Donphan which is uh, another physically bulky pain in my booty here we're gonna get toxic spikes up it's not really gonna matter because he can wrap and spin them away right off the bat um, and we don't really do anything to it. I believe a knockoff does 20 to 25 percent damage uh, to the Dawn fan. So I'm just gonna go get the heck out of here. I'm not really trying to uh, to lose my Drapion in the first turn. Go back in Ox Queen. Who? Yes, I'm aware is frozen. Uh, he's gonna get his Stealth Rocks up. You know, it was expected to be honest. Uh, but at this point, I'm just trying to get unfrozen. I'm just spamming. I believe I'm spamming Light Screen. I honestly don't believe. I don't remember what I spammed what button I kept clicking, you know, every turn, but, uh, small spoiler, I don't unfreeze at any point here, so, he goes and gets his rapid spin, and Rotom Wash is gonna take a little bit of rapid spin damage to get rid of the poison spikes, but we, we knew, that's, that's how that works, get our lefties damage, shoutouts to Leftovers being the only thing that's keeping Rotom alive at this point, um, so he's gonna withdraw, he's not gonna try and take me out with, uh, with Dawn Van because he has nothing really for me, he goes into his, uh, his uh his manectric and what he, would you have it i'm still frozen but i already spoiled that for you so it's not really much of a of a revelation here so we're gonna get some health back again through the, through the leftovers and the uh, manectric's gonna thunderbolt and would you have it the thunderbolt is going to not kill us because we're you know just incredibly bulky but oh heaven forbid and or no, we don't have light screen at this point but oh heaven forbid we don't unfreeze because that would be too nice 
Um, and instead, we are just going to sit there uh, frozen even longer, and the Thunderbolt's going to take us out. No point in, no point in switching anything out, because there's nothing else I would rather have take that damage than Rotom, who's already frozen and essentially out of commission here. Um, so we're going to go into Corona, my Assault Vested Typhlosion, uh, thinking it could do some decent damage to Manectric here. He's going to Volt, you know, to be expected. It's going to hardly do anything to me, because I'm, I'm near max spe special defense. Uh, and Assault Fest is going to straighten your Porygon too. He's going to take, I believe, a Fire Blast like a champion, uh, if I remember correctly. So he gets the download. It's only going to up his attack. Not a big deal. So you go with the Fire Blast, and it's going to not burn. Nothing like that. It's hardly going to do anything. It did maybe 15%. We're going to follow up with a Focus Blast. By the way, shoutouts to good RNG later in the game, trying to make up for it by having me not miss any key uh, moves that can that can miss. But obviously, we don't in we didn't invest enough in... Um, in special attack so fire blast and focus blast aren't even going to come close and he's going to recover right back off so back out we go there's no point in in staying in uh because we're just going to sit here and lose this recover war and into machine king we go to try and get our own hazards up on the field and something that can handle uh this this team basically because we're, we're totally losing the momentum more because of that freeze which was so 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 imperative and if anyone tells me it didn't matter well you are ignorant my fool so or, um we're I was going to say my friend, my fool, whatever, I don't care. Um, so, uh, Porygon 2 goes out after getting a Tri-Attack off, not doing anything, and goes into Dawn Fan, and we're just going to get the Toxic off. was meant for Porygon 2, but, you know, we'll take it on the Dawn Fan. Um, so, you know, we finally did get a Toxic off on something, which is nice. Um, I would have rather have gotten it on Porygon 2, like I had originally intended, but you know what? It's, that's not it's not it's not it's not allowed don't 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 try don't try to toxic the Porygon too uh it's not gonna happen so we're gonna switch out I'm not trying to not trying to lose to an earthquake we go back here we go out into taiki the tokus who is going to attempt to take an earthquake so my opponent actually doubles out i think doubles out i believe that was a double out uh it goes into Magirna. so yay i get to take a flash cannon to the face or lose all momentum yet again um so here we are sitting there, and I decide, you know what, I'm just going to defog. I'd rather my opponent lose his rocks, because that's a pain in the butt. So we get the defog off, and my opponent's going to, of course, go for a flash cannon. We do take it like a champion, I do admit, um, but it does a solid 50%. I'm really glad it didn't kill, but 50%, and we get the, the oh-so-lucky spadeth drop. Not that it really mattered, because we still die uh, to a flash cannon anyway, but it's just a matter of like, hey man, let's twist the knife a little bit here. Um, just a little bit of RNG that doesn't actually matter. So we're going to go out anyway. I wanted to preserve Toad Kiss for later. So I feel like there's a couple of times where we might actually rely on it. So we're going to switch into Metagross, catch a perfect Shadow Ball read, uh, and take another 50%. So shout out to T-Train for reading that uh, perfectly. But at the same time, we couldn't really stay in anyway because, well, we already had a Spadef drop. So it wouldn't have been a good idea to try and stay in. So anyway... He goes out into his Dawn Fan once again to try and take on uh, Metagross one on one. And we're getting that Earthquake off. We're getting an Earthquake off on the Dawn Fan, getting a nice, what, 15% damage off. Uh, at this point, I'm just trying to get some chips so that the Toxic can try, or can hopefully kill it, uh, you know, down a couple turns from now. So he's going to get his lefties back up. Doesn't really matter. Poison's going to be canceling that out effectively. Uh, so we are in a decent spot here. Uh, Metagross is actually in kind of an interesting position where as long as he's able to take on this Dawn Fan here, which we go straight for the Stealth Rock, we're, we're trading Stealth Rocks at this point. Because we outspeed, we're in an interesting position where as long as T-Train's committed to the game of removing our rocks, uh, we can stay in and just go for attacks. Um, so that will allow Metagross to actually overpower a Dawn Fan, which is not something it's meant to do. All it takes is my opponent to one turn decide to go for Earthquake, and Metagross is, well, screwed. So, um, the next turn, you know, we're just, he, we traded rocks, like I said, he's taking his toxic damage, and we're, we're sitting, like, it looks bad, but we're not as bad as we, as we could be. So I go for the Earthquake, I just want to get more chip damage off on this thing. Uh, Metagross is doing just fine, I think he's going for Rapid Spin, it's far too obvious. Uh, he goes for the Rapid Spin, like I predict, to get rid of my rocks. No point in me going to try and get them back up, only to lose them again, because we outspeed. Um, and yet again, now with the leftovers coming in and doing its job, we are now in a good position to go and set our rocks back up because, well, there's no reason not to at this point. Uh, there's no point in not having our rocks and we're at the point where he switches out. The Dawn fan kind of dies, uh, to Toxic, uh, on, in a couple turns. So we get our stealth rocks back up and my opponent made a clear 
uh, a, a clear folly here where he thought I didn't have Bullet Punch. I actually talked to two train after the match here. And he thought this was Thunder Punch as my fourth move for Gyarados. Thought I had Thunder Punch. No, I had Bullet Punch, which is an easy, easy, easy Oko from full on Sneasel. Obviously was a Life Orb set. Not a big deal there. Nice and dead. So with Sneasel off the board, I'm able to just go ahead and get my leftovers back up. Nice, nice little bit of a momentum shift with uh, with with Sneasel going down. I don't have to worry about this being some kind of BS 6-0 or something like that due to that freeze. So we did get clock in our first kill, and he goes into Magirna, which is going to reveal a Shuckaberry, uh, and is going to catch an Earthquake. I think he had it for Landorus, but it's not a big deal, so we are going to be able to get a nice hit off. Uh, we are going to take a Shadow Ball to the face. Uh, but I believe we live this. I feel like we do live this. Yeah, so we're gonna live this with 34 uh, Get our get our, our lefties health back up and we're going to be able to take out this Magirna if he decides to leave it in uh, He has uh, He had the uh, what was it the light or air balloon Manectric So he definitely could have preserved it if he wanted to I went for bullet punch on the off chance He went out into Manectric so that way I could pop the air balloon uh, That was what I originally wanted to do plus I knew the that that bullet punch killed uh, from the range we were at, so I guess we just wanted to sack it off and get a free out into Gyarados to try and uh, to try and go for game here. Uh, and I'm in an interesting position here because he goes for the Dragon Dance. I am going to go ahead for Toxic, but the thing about this Gyarados is you notice that it didn't go for Intimidate right off the bat. So I mean, it's a Moxie Gyarados. Now, Moxie Gyarados with Dragon Dance is terrifying because it has very high sweep potential. Uh, the moment it clocks its first kill, uh, especially once it's gotten some some Dragon Dance set up. So I know I just have to basically sack off Metagross here now that we've taken out, uh, or now that we've, yeah, now that we've taken off uh, uh, Magirna, uh, but we are just going to be sitting here and take, I go for the Bull Punch to try and get a little bit of extra chip uh, as I can. I know it's not going to do much, it's going to do 10% max, uh, but he goes and gets a Waterfall off and that's of course going to be more than enough to kill uh, Metagross, but I didn't quite, didn't quite click in my head that he was Moxie, I still thought he was uh, uh, Intimidate. So right at that point I realized, oh crap, I need to go in and get Landorus on the field to intimidate some of that away because I cannot afford for this thing to be plus two at any point in the game. If this thing gets to plus two, it's basically GG because uh, it can come in in one shot pretty much everything I have left on the team with Waterfall, especially at plus one speed. Uh, so we get the Intimidate off, which is good. Uh, we're, we're, in a, we're in a point, we're in a spot where I know Landorus can't live a hit, but I know other things can live a hit at plus one. So I go into Drapion. I know he can live one at plus one. That was, that was the, the plan there. So he goes to the Waterfall. And we live it on, what, 16 health, something like that. I really would have loved to have this for Porygon 2, but at the end of the day, I needed to sack this off in order to in order to chip down the Gyarados for as much as possible. So um, I decided I'm just going to let this go, and I'm hoping and praying that Toxic is going to do enough. And I'm saying, Toxic, please do enough. Toxic, please be enough uh, to pick up the KO here uh, with the Moxie, so, or, uh, or to prevent the Moxie sweep. So... He does live on maybe five health, give or take. So that's a free kill. That's a free Togekiss kill. Would have loved to have Togekiss for later. Would able be able to get if we outsped, like say the Porygon two, for instance, we could roost off. I uh, would be able to hang in there. But no, he he's gonna have enough. And I so crit doesn't matter, of course. He's gonna live. Um, but now we're in a situation where it's Landorus and uh, I'm trying to remember who's my other guy at this point. Uh, Landorus and one other guy against the world. I think it's Typhlosion, actually. That sounds about right. So Landorus and Typhlosion against the world here. But the upside is that with Gyarados out of the way, the only sweeper uh, he has left is his Manectric. So as long as I can overpower the Manectric, we're in a good spot. Um, but the annoying thing is that Stealth Rocks are going to be putting me into a, into an HP Ice range uh, to kill, even after, even after the... Um, the uh, health increase that I gave. I gave a little bit extra health. So he's gonna go for the Volt Switch, go right on out. Uh, not not trying to take any damage, not trying to lose his air balloon, but for any reason. So he's gonna go into a Relephant, the Dawn fan who is gonna, I believe I just cleanly take him out with a Flamethrower. Yeah, I just go straight for the Flamethrower. Typhlosion clocks a kill. I don't know how many kills Typhlosion's actually got this season, but that's one more for him. Uh, so good job to him there. Uh, now it's uh, the Manectric and the Porygon 2, I believe, against the Typhlosion and the Landorus Therian. So very down to the wire match, despite a super, 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 super unlucky turn, which completely dictates the, the momentum of this match. So uh, Corona is unfortunately going to go down to a Thunderbolt, not the end of the world. I was thinking at this point, okay, I have Savage spin out. I can go for, um, I can go for a, 
uh, Savage Spin Out on with U-Turn, and it will guarantee to Oko, and if I live, then I can go for a Superpower on Porygon and potentially pick up the KO uh, on both. But unfortunately, Hidden Power Ice is going to do enough. It's a roll. Um, I looked at it. It, it. It's We had enough health investment where we could have lived, but we didn't end up living in this instance. So... Uh, really good, uh, really good match there, T Train. Shoutouts to him. Go check his, go check his channel down in the description. Um, you know, it could have, if that turn five didn't happen, it would have drastically changed the outcome of this game um, to the point where I think we could have won. I don't see any situation uh, where if that didn't happen, you know, obviously, you know, butterfly effect and everything, but it really didn't look like we were going to have that much trouble because both Metagross and Rotom Wash held most of this team back at bay to a point where we could get some momentum. Drapion never got going because that Gyarados was able to set up, and Togekiss never really got going because of, that Drape or because of the Gyarados. And the Gyarados only got set up because we had Rotom dead. So Rotom didn't die. It's a whole different ball game. Um, but unfortunately, that is the game we play, and I'm not going to sit here. I can, I can bitch about hacks, you know, seven ways to Sunday, but it's not going to change the outcome of this match. And I can't be mad at T-Train, because he played an excellent game with what he had, and he just took what he had and ran with it. So, um, kudos to you, T-Train. Um, best of luck against Kelly or Jerry, I believe is who you play next. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but anyway, this is where the Seattle Sea Kings are going to end. To be fair, we were 5-7, and seven, so I guess it's kind of fitting that we don't get to go on past a team that was 9-3. and three. Uh, But, you know, there's always next season. Better luck to us then. Hopefully we get... I gotta admit... I'm not 100%, like, I didn't really like my draft as much, and, and my assistant coaches can back me up on this. It felt like our team had a little bit of a problem with, um, like, it got outbulked by, by super bulky teams, and it got outsped by hyper-offensive teams. And it was this awkward middle ground that didn't really get going, and it didn't quite have the right, it didn't have enough pivot, like, it had, it had U-turn and Volt Switch between Lando and... Rotom, but it really, like, it kind of wanted to be, like, three different things, and it didn't do any of those one thing, or any of those things very well in the end. So, um, I'm definitely gonna have to reevaluate, like, uh, what I'm picking up at the draft, what we're all, like, we, it's, it's definitely a lesson learned. Um, season four is gonna be interesting for sure, um, but, you know, this is where the book, the, the book closes for Seattle Sea Kings in season three. So, hope you guys enjoyed the ride. And I hope to see you guys in future videos on this channel and as well as future Seattle Sea Kings matches. So until then, Stoder signing out. Y'all have a good one. Bye bye.